Eliza Hitman, you served as an executive producer and director of the limited series, A Friend of the Family, which tells uh, the strange and disturbing story of, of a man who kidnapped his neighbor's daughter uh, on more than one occasion. Uh, how much did you know about this story uh, before this project came to you? Um, the truth is I knew nothing about the real story. I hadn't seen the Netflix documentary. So I came to it really with fresh eyes. Um, I received the script from the writer showrunner Nick Antosca, and it was just so exceptionally written. And the characters were so vivid on the page and the world was so sort of beautifully rendered that I just kind of devoured the script immediately, which rarely happens. And I met with Nick and, and then I went and I, you know, educated myself on the Netflix documentary and everything else that had been written um, about the case and the abductions. But really my, my desire to work on the show came from the caliber of the script that I was handed initially. Uh, and how did uh, watching the documentary uh, Abducted in Plain Sight, like did that uh, inform your approach to uh, telling the story in any way or did you feel like you really wanted to kind of uh, take this story in its own direction? Um, it, yeah, it didn't really, inform the show for me. Um, I think the documentary was an hour long and there was so much that it left out. You know, the relationship that Jan Broberg had with Birch Told lasted a decade. So I, I think that the, the, the documentary tells a very complicated story that feels far-fetched to an audience because there's so much missing and omitted um, from the narrative based on how compressed the, ser the documentary was. So I, I think that what the show does is it really, you know, opens up the 10 years of their lives and shows how he was able to manipulate and sort of get control of her life. It just wasn't something, you know, that, that the documentary was able to really address. Uh, and, and how was it telling this story with uh, with Jan Broberg herself uh, being involved in the project uh, mm -hmm. as a producer? Uh, you know, getting having yeah. that access to the subject is you know, yeah. valuable. I, I think that I've thought a lot about the ethics of true crime, and what appealed to me about the show was having Jan as a collaborator whose voice was heard through the writing of the show and. Her presence was on set every day. And I think it's a rare scenario to see a true crime series where the victim has given consent to their story being told. From an artistic perspective, I think that what Jan did was bring a level of depth to the characters that maybe we wouldn't have had had she not been on set. Like I can give you an example. Um, you know, her father in the, you know, in, in real life, he was a florist and he um, had many kind of encounters with Birch Toll that veered into sexual encounters or assaults. And I think it would have been easy to judge him and, and said, oh, maybe he was closeted, maybe this, maybe that. But having Jan talk about how she experienced him, you know, prevented us from judging or limiting the representation of who those real people were. She would say, no, my father, he had such a bright sense of humor. And then we were able to talk about that with Colin Hanks and bring the essence of these people that yes, they had this sort of dark journey, you know, um, but they were also real people living their life every day. And that wasn't always what she saw. Um, and, and so I, I think Jan's perspective on her family, on who her parents were as individuals, as who they were as parents, it really helped bring shades of color to all of these characters on the screen. 
And um, speaking of shades of characters, you've got Jake Lacey giving mm -hmm. this uh, mm -hmm. central performance mm -hmm. um, where he has to be, uh, you know, this unsettling mm -hmm. figure, but also charismatic enough that we mm -hmm. as an audience believe that he would win over this family. Mm -hmm. um, what was it like working with him and, and really kind of getting the nuances of that character? Mm -hmm. Jake is phenomenal just as a human being, as an actor. And I think what was exciting about casting him in this role is that he hadn't done it before. He really hasn't played this kind of villainous man in his career, so it was new for him. So how we discovered the character, how we came up with the character's motivation and what the driving force is behind you know, Birch told was something we really got to work on together. And that made it a joy for me was to have an actor who was sort of hungry for a dialogue with the director because it was new territory. Um, I, and I think that, you know, what was important for us um, in sort of honing in on who the character was, was we, we really talked about in the beginning of the series, approaching it like a love story. Like in a way, you know, Jake thinks of his character as sort of a Romeo running away with this young woman who also happens to only be 11, the piece of it he can't see, the piece of it he can't, you know, for him, it's just a sort of taboo love story. The age didn't factor into his thinking. So to sort of set up and launch the series, we did not want to present him as a villain. We wanted to present him as a man who had fallen in love with somebody he wasn't allowed to be with. And here they are running away together. Um, and, and I think that that was a more interesting choice than trying to you know, play a bad guy or to try and really get into the psychology of the real man, which I think is impossible. I think it's impossible to really know what goes on inside a sociopath's head, you know, or a pedophile's head, you know, but for this show and for, you know, for the representation of the real story, we focused on you know, one thing, which is his his sort of love and, his, you know, that happiness he experiences when he's in Jan's company. Uh, and, you know, you're, you're well known for the independent films that you have uh, <laughs> directed. Um, how, how is the process on a limited series like this creatively uh, different from uh, independent film? Well, I, I think the process is, is not different. I think what was different for me is that I did not write it. Um, and, you know, being able to just come on set as a director in a way can be liberating, you know, because I'm just using that one side of my brain essentially, and I'm allowed to work in different styles and it gives me, kind of an open sandbox to explore and, and direct in a way that I, I normally wouldn't do in one of my own scripts. Um, so I, I would say that it just kind of creates a lot of opportunity for me to, to break out of my own sensibility and to take the weight off my shoulders of kind of carrying the pressure of being the author of the project from beginning to end. Um, so it, it's it's an opportunity really. And I think Nick is a brilliant showrunner, you know, and he really trusts directors and he's not trying to sort of direct from the sidelines necessarily. He loves sort of, you know, he loves the meld of two imaginations, the melding of two imaginations. So that made it even more exciting. And we were both looking at a lot of references from 70s cinema. And that was also fun for us to kind of go down you know, and look at films like Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore, Badlands, and try and look at sort of the language and the feel and the textures. And how do you bring that to a TV show that's shooting two episodes in like 14 days? I don't know, but we try. <laughs> well, uh, I want to congratulate you on your work on the show. Um, you know, certainly 
you know, if, if there were time constraints, you wouldn't know it on screen. Uh, it's a, a fantastic piece of work. And, and thank you so much for talking to me about it today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.